Hey guys, this is Wyatt coming back with my third video about CTE and uh, in this one I wanted to talk about some of my playing history, my past and uh, just anything that I can document that might help you know scientists and different people who are studying this and trying to connect the dots of what all could go in to as different factors that play into developing this problem. So let me go ahead and get started I'd say like from the very beginning I always had headaches, migraines that would be so bad to the point where they could make me sick starting as a young kid probably before I even played contact sports starting in probably second grade and when I, from what I remember and maybe that's a common thing that kids outgrow at some point because I think at some point they did become less but I don't know if I could say for sure there's ever a point in my life where I wasn't like getting fairly consistent migraines. You know, as a kid, I got used to taking like two Excedrin. You know, like I I learned the signs of when they were coming, and I just got used to just popping two Excedrin, and I didn't even think about you know how much drugs and caffeine that was at the time. You know, I just did it. Um, it was just something I did. <coughs> so. I'd say that was one thing that was happening beforehand and then also I'd say as a kid you know I wouldn't try to um, you know rag too much or say I was like that out of line with my diet you know or like I'm not try I wouldn't try to make my parents feel bad but I'd just say my diet as a kid I think even like up to the point when I was in high school looking back now it was not much of a diet at all so you know I, I ate real sugary things and um, yeah I just didn't have a real consistent healthy diet um, and a real high intake of sugar and different stuff which maybe isn't that uncommon but you know from the things we're learning about sugar now too you have to consider that could it be a factor um, also caffeine I always did a lot of caffeine um, as a kid and even into like through my playing career and different stuff like that um, the next thing I would probably say is maybe um, talking about depression and different things dealing with that I'd say the earliest time I remember getting depressed was probably around 6th grade. Um, but I was also going through a significant change in my life, moving from a small town to a big city. But, you know, throughout junior high, and then especially once I got into high school, depression was kind of like a major part of my life. Something that was really affecting me. I'm somewhat, you know, out of my control, it felt like. And I should have been doing a better job of acknowledging it and trying to get help and letting people know and trying to fight that as much as you can because I think that is is the right approach is you have to fight those those ideas and, and that attack as much as you can or else you know the outcome could be really drastic the other going the other way you know so that's my advice a small little tidbit you know to kids acknowledging that and you know, it may feel small or, you know, you may feel better to reward and gratify that feeling of, wow, I'm not nothing, but I just say nip it in the bud and fight that, man. Um, but, you know, I think it was something that definitely as I got into college playing football, it really, really started to drain my energy. And I think it was changing who I was as a person and maybe combined with this disease and different concussion symptoms you know it's hard to tell which things were which but it was changing kinda of who I was as a person and and my outlook and my energy towards just living a happy healthy life um, going into like my playing career uh, one of the probably the main thing that I think was a factor for me in developing these negative symptoms that I'm living with now is uh, hidden with my head. I don't know if I was just hard-headed or what you would want to call it, but you know, it always seemed to me like I knew I could hit with my head and that it was gonna, you know, 
affect other people more than me. Like, they would shy away from contact or something, you know, starting, like, Little League, I'd say. And I don't know if it was necessarily... At some point, it became conscious, but it was kind of like... I didn't think it was a negative thing. No coach ever told me necessarily not to or, like, tried to coach me out of that habit. Um, I think it was just as you progressed up the levels, having that habit of, like, you know, getting your head involved in the contact as opposed to trying to keep it out of the contact, you know, it was kind of a deadly habit by that point. And, you know, the things we didn't know now, you know, that should try to avoid that at all costs, you know, if you don't want to end up dealing with these things for the rest of your life that we're going through now. Um, if, you know, they really could have let us know a lot sooner, it could have probably helped, you know, save myself a lot of suffering and a lot of other guys. But anyways, I just want to say I think it was a certain playing style not everybody had, but like, you know, maybe there's certain guys that were hard-headed or whatever. Like, I don't know, it seemed like it didn't ever face me. And, and that's the scary thing, too, is like, you know, you're taught to keep going and, and, you know, run through a brick wall if I tell you whatever, this, that. But it's like, you know, you could do those things and it wasn't like you were going to die then. That was the scary thing. You can survive those things and be just fine. It's the effects of the accumulation of those acts that you deal with later on. That's the hard part. Um, so, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, I think just, like, being the, the style of player I was, kind of giving it 100%, being a guy that was more likely to, you know, hit with my head or headbutt someone, button press as hard as I could, going 100%, not shy away from contact, being that type of guy, and then being maybe a little bit of an undersized guy and it's still playing that way. And then as you progress up the levels and things get bigger and bigger and then college, you know, it's just the next level, like the impact and the significance of those hits and those things was just even greater as you progressed. And I think the symptoms of, you know, the things I could have or maybe should have noticed um, progressing along the way. I, I feel like it should have been caught, but then again, we didn't know necessarily what we were looking for. It would help if someone let you know, and you could look for those things. Uh, lastly, I just want to be open. I guess maybe not lastly, but one of the last things is that I want to be open about is uh, supplements and stuff because we don't know what effect they play so I would just put on record that I was taking like started taking like protein like ninth grade in like a small creatine protein mix sophomore year but so small that it was like insignificant and then my junior year through like my senior year I was pretty much just taking creatine um, that's in high school and you know I felt really good when I was taking that you know you felt like like you could get stronger and you felt I felt healthy for the most part maybe up until I got mono my senior year in the middle of my senior year and I was trying to bounce back from that <clears throat> and you know, do track and stuff, like get back in shape for track in between. I think I was running myself down, trying to work out so hard to get back for that. And um, then I ended up getting, you know, a, a scholarship to Mid-America. So I go there, and the summer before there, I took my first pre-workout. I got like on Jack 3D or whatever it was called, you know, which... I thought it was just a caffeinated pre-workout, but, you know, again, what we learn now is, like, they had some drug that ended up getting banned, like, MDAA or something that was, like, a stimulant that put your body into some form of hyper-overdrive and built muscle out of nothing, essentially. I'm guessing I don't really know how it works or what's the science, but I think most people now know about it and know you sh 
probably, I think it's banned from most supplements or it's at least avoided if, for the most part, you know. Um, but then, played my freshman year, and then my summer after that, I, tr I tried taking some testosterone booster that actually ended up being the same drug again, like NBAA. It wasn't testosterone booster at all. It was a stimulant that literally just sends your body into that hyperbolic state or whatever, like I said. And, you know, that, like, you know, it really cut you down lean and put on muscle and whatnot. But, you know, again, if you're not eating right and don't have the right diet, you're doing hard things on your body. And what, you know, I was also doing other things that summer, hanging out, partying, and, you know, not treating my body right. And I end up getting a headache that wouldn't go away. End up going to the hospital because of it. My eyes had become so inflamed that I couldn't hardly see. They got me on morphine, got the swelling down, and pushed my eyes to where they were, like, permanently cross-eyed. Once I kind of, you know, came to the next morning, everything. I thought that was the end. I was done with football, whatever. They told me I had a thyroid problem. And... Um, Graves' disease. And so, you know, that it wasn't a major deal. They would give me on some medicine and I'd be happy that that was just it. You know, but... I really wanted to be done at that point. I just wanted to be done, but my mom, she really wanted me to go to school. She pushed me to go back to Mid-America because it's like at that point, it was like two weeks into the school year that and, that I was missing classes. And uh, I was like, I don't want to go back because only people I know are football players. I'm going to want to go back and play again if I go back there. And, like, I'm going to need to, you know, be a part of the team to, like, go to that school because it was so expensive. So I go back, and I end up just filming practices, you know, for, like, most of the semester. But the medication I was on got me back to where I gained back my weight because I lost, like, 30 pounds. I went down to, like, 170 or something. And... I started gaining my weight back because it was regulating my thyroid again, you know, but um, I think this was the part where it's kind of like the perfect storm, you know, because from there on out, it felt like any symptom I was dealing with, I thought I was fighting against my Graves' disease. So it was like, I ended up coming back to play on the team. You know, just barely just didn't make it in time to start playing, like, when we went to playoffs and stuff. So I stayed home that year from the playoffs and stuff. But, like, I had been practicing and stuff, like, the last couple of weeks leading up to that point. Uh, like, you know, put my weight back on. It slowly started working out, conditioning again, those things. And... Uh, And so it was like, from there I felt like I was like battling this disease and stuff. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to let this thing control me the rest of my life. You know, I still want to be able to do the things I love. And so it was like starting with still playing football. That was the way I was going to go at it. You know, but it was like, what I didn't know is there's also something else going on in this sport for guys that play the way I do that is going to affect you mentally and physically that you know I think some of those symptoms for me was kind of like you didn't know which ones were which and I was fighting and battling against all of these things the the depression the tiredness um you know the vision problems and um you know the mentally becoming mentally slow not being yourself not being able to talk and think as fast all these things I'm thinking I'm battling this Graves disease problem and, you know, I thought I'd slowly change because of that, you know, and it was like, you know, from what I'm feeling like now and from what I'm coming to understand now, I was more probably should have been alerted to, you know, symptoms of brain damage, head trauma, 
and it was a whole different beast. You know, I probably could have taken that year off of school, you know, settled down to realize what I'm dealing with and how to deal with just a thyroid problem and probably realized it wasn't that serious and maybe realized I want to go focus on school and start the rest of my life instead of playing a sport you know and 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 giving it everything you got and literally giving your life to it for no reason um You know, so I think I covered most of the things. I probably could have done a better job. I didn't take too much time to do it, but that's the gist of, um, you know, that that story and my story there. And uh, I could elaborate on any one of those, but, you know, I think for the most part, that's essentially, like, what happened from my point of view. And... Uh, And, you know, so after that, after that whole thyroid incident, you know, that was my sophomore year, I'd end up playing another two years. Another two years of head trauma, concussions, undiagnosed, and beating your body up for one, herniated discs in my back, end up with some neck injury that actually kind of went undiagnosed from college before I left, and now I'm, like, pop my neck every day, and... I mean, it's just a lot of things that aren't worth it, you know, and so I'm just putting my story out there, and that's that part of that story for me. Maybe I'll say more about it later, but for now, that's it. Thanks.